Good morning. Today we are going to cover the last topic under associative memories that is Hopfield neural network. Hopfield neural network falls under the recurrent type of neural networks and they function as according to your Hebb's rule uh, that we studied earlier also and that was used in case of auto associative memory, heterosociative associative memory as well as for bidirectional associative memory. So the learning or weight updation rule will remain the same as that of your Hebb's learning rule. The only difference is that it functions in an asynchronous way to recall or to extract back the stored pattern within the memory. This asynchronous method we are going to look at it in near future. Uh, now the overall architecture of Hopfield neural network can be seen as let there are four neurons or we want to store the patterns distributed over four number of features so this neuron represent feature number one or output number one feature number two or output number two feature number three or output number three and so on means to say there are equal number of input neurons as that of your output number of neurons because it is uh, a kind of auto associative memory now uh, let us discuss its architecture the first neuron neuron number one of the input or output layer uh, will be receiving x1 as input and it will produce y1 as your output now this y1 output will be recurrent back will be recurrent back to the other neurons in the form of this y1 output will go to neuron number 2 as weight number w21 it will go to neuron number 3 as weight number 31 it will go to neuron number 4 as weight number 41 in the same way let your neuron number 2 receives an input x2 and it produces your output number y2 this y2 will be recurrent back in terms of weights now it will be fed back to each other neuron except itself so it will be going to this neuron number one and its name will be w of one two it will go to neuron number three and its name will be w of three two it will go to neuron number four and its weight will be weight number four two and one thing more to know that all w i j's where i is equal to j are set as equal to zero it means this w11 w22 w33 w41 will all become equal to zero now the same trend follows that for the neuron number three as well it receives x3 as input it receives x4 as input then this y3 will be fed back will be recurrent back and what is what are the various names of weights this one will become w of 3 w of 1 3 it will become w of 2 3 it will become w of 4 and 3 in the same line that we named these three and these three neurons then for this fourth one also will be having an output this output will be fed back and when it goes to this one then it will be named as w of 1 4 it will be named as w of 2 4 further w of 3 4 and w of 4 4 was equal to 0 as per this equation so this is the architecture or the initial set of for the Hoffield neural network now one thing to note that as there are uh, these four are input neurons as well as these four again are your output neurons also so we'll be having four number of input four number of output if we think of them as individual and each one is connected to the other one so there will be m into m or 4 is to 4 number of total weights which are to be used by this 
ये होफिल्ड न्यूरल नेटवर्क सो दिस इज द आर्किटेक्चर ऑफ योर होफिल्ड न्यूरल नेटवर्क एंड वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दैट इट मेक्स यूज ऑफ हेल्प्स लर्निंग फॉर इनिशियली सेटिंग दीज वेट्स विच आर फोर इज टू फोर वेट मेट्रिक्स एज वी डिट विद योर ऑटो एसोसिएटिव और बाई डायरेक्शनल एसोसिएटिव मेमरीज एंड आवर हेट्रो एसोसिएटिव मेमरीज सो दे आर लर्निंग रूल रिमेन्स द सेम नाउ आफ्टर सपोज देर आर देर वर फोर पैटर्न्स पी वन पी टू पी थ्री एंड पी फोर देर वर फोर पैटर्न्स विच वर टू बी स्टोर सो वी स्टोर एंड लेट ऑल ऑफ दैम वर बाईपोलर इन नेचर means in the form of plus 1 and minus 1 then we can apply the hebs rule of setting our weight matrix to be equal to transpose of s then multiplied by the target so this will result in these weight setups once these weights are set up it means the hopeful neural network has remembered all the stored patterns now we want to just test them now uh, suppose we want to test whether our network is working fine or not or suppose there is a case that instead of the four bits pattern which were just stored there four featured vectors four featured vector which were stored here uh, if we are only having uh, two features other two are missing now we want to check the result which are generated by this hopeful neural network when only two features were presented to it logically the pattern which is most similar in these two features should be returned as output now what is going to be this testing procedure your testing procedure of your hopeful neural network is different now what is the difference now let us look at the difference in your testing process what it says is that the hopeful neural networks follows an asynchronous way of activating the neurons in the output layer or your input layer means to say if there are four neurons 1 2 3 and 4 the weights were initialized the patterns were stored like this four patterns were stored it means the weight matrix was found using this equation now we have a new pattern which consists of f1 and f2 further f3 and f4 were both missing what were both missing we want to extract the most similar pattern which into this Uh, F1, F2, and missing F3 and F4. First of all, before proceeding our testing process, we need to assign an order of asynchronous activation. Let this order be three, four, one, and two. Let this be our asynchronous order. So, what we are going to do is that we will uh, activate our hopeful neural network. Involving four features, two, three, and four. Assuming these two is equal to minus one. Suppose they be. So these were the four neurons. We activated these with by passing F one to this, F two to this, F three to this, and F four to this. Now when uh, it was recurrent in nature, means some weights were. like this as we done earlier then while activating the neural network we will just follow the asynchronous order means neuron number 3 is to be activated first it means we will activate this neuron we will excite this neuron and calculates the sum at this particular neuron and then we will apply some activation function upon this sum and will generate corresponding y for this function now this y will be fed back to other neuron as their weights and in the next iteration your neuron number 4 will be activated it will get excited 
same the output will be generated for four it will again fed back then neuro number one will be activated then again neuro number two will be activated and it completes one epoch one epoch now we have to repeat we have to reiterate through a uh, many number of epochs or when or till there is no convergence in the output being generated by the neurons it means whenever we reach the certain equilibrium means the output generated by these four at a particular time is same as that of your previous iteration at that time we are going to stop and whatever pattern we are obtaining at that situation we will generate we will output that as the pattern stored corresponding to the uh, initial input that was f1 f2 and missing these two values two. okay now let there be p patterns to be stored using your hoffel neural network these all patterns are distributed over m features now being auto uh, being auto associative in nature the input and output both are going to remain the same and as there are m multiplied by m or you can say m into m weights uh, to be calculated uh, in this hoffel neural network so let us uh, look at the configuration of your input and output so let us go through the input matrix or you can say feature matrix as we know that there are p number of patterns and there are m number of features this denotes your pattern number one this denotes to p pattern number two and the last one denotes the pattern number p x of p1 denotes first feature of pattern number p second feature of pattern number p and x of pm denotes your mth feature of your pattern number p as we uh, because of your auto associative uh, nature of your hoffel network this will remain your output vector also those there this this matrix can have three names we can call it the feature matrix we can call it as your input matrix we can also call it as output matrix now corresponding to these uh, this uh, uh, matrix input matrix we have to uh, draw your hopeful neural network so the hopeful neural network will contain your m number of neurons and each neuron will be uh, connected to uh, connected uh, their output to, to the weights of other neurons or you can say the output of the neurons are uh, becoming the new weight vectors for the other neurons in the line so there are m uh, and to m number of weights to be found find out and these weight can be represented using your weight matrix w means uh, there are m number of uh, rows and there are m number of features so this is your w of 1 1 means in case of whole hopeful neural network the self connection are going to become zero so this diagonal will be zero throughout the matrix this 1 2 denotes uh, weight from the output of neuron number 1 to this one means this denotes your weight number w of 1 2 then 1 3 output of third neuron being fed to neuron number 1 this denotes your uh, weight number 3 uh, 1 3 and so on or you can say that this whole weight vector is represented using first row this weight vector represented by this second row and this weight vector m being represented by your m pro so these are two configuration for your hoffel neural network one is your input matrix second one is your weight matrix now this weight matrix is calculated using your help rule as was the case with your earlier associative memory architectures what uh, uh, your half uh, what your helps rule say is that if two neurons are correlated in a positive way then the strength of connection between them is to be enhanced otherwise it has to be weakened now the helps rule further differs the uh, differs as according to your input and output characteristics if your input and output 
is bipolar in nature if your input and output are bipolar in nature or you can say in the form of plus 1 and minus 1 then this is the formulation for your Hebb's rule means uh, a transpose of your input matrix multiplied by your target matrix in case of your Hoffel network this input matrix and output matrix both are same so we can say that it will be equal to s of t multiplied by s itself so it will be uh, it is your m is 2 m matrix it is also your m is 2 m matrix so the resultant matrix will also be of dimension m into n means this matrix will be generated for bipolar natured input as according to this formula the individual weight in this matrix can also be obtained by using w of ij is equal to s means we are calculating it for pattern number p uh, not for pattern number p but for overall matrix this uh, we are talking about wij which is the entry for this matrix it will be calculated by summing all summing it for all the patterns for p number of patterns we have to sum the product of s of i for ph sample and s of j for ph sample just multiply them and add them for all samples we will obtain the entry w of ij for this matrix now suppose our weights or the input and output are binary in nature means of the nature containing zeros and ones only then the Hebb's rule configuration change what uh, is now the configuration for Hebb's rule is that your weight matrix this one will be equal to 2 multiplied by transpose of s minus 1 again multiplied by 2s minus 1 so this is for this whole matrix now a single entry w of ij for this matrix can be calculated by summing the product of these terms for all patterns and putting them in your matrix w so this is the way how this weight matrix is to be calculated for your Hoffel neural network now what we have done till yet we talked about input we talked about output we talked about the weights now the single one process that is still left is our activation functions means what activation functions are to be used for your hopeful neural networks it makes a use of your step activation function given by that yj will be equal to 1 if the sum of your input at your jth neuron is greater than 0 it means we are talking about the sum at this neuron we are talking the sum about this neuron if this sum is greater than 0 then it will generate 1 as output if this sum is equal to 0 then the output will remain same as that of your last phase if it is less than 0 thus output will be equal to 0 so now till yet we are clear about all parts all subsystems of your Hoffman neural network <coughs> in the next lecture we will try to trace out these this process on a numerical example and we'll try to train the Hoffel network and will test it for some inputs which were not seen earlier by the Hoffel neural network.